Justice League is directed by Zack Snyder. Sort of, it's kind of directed by Joss Whedon as well, but I'll get into that in just a bit. And it stars Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot, um, Ezra Miller, Ray Fisher, Jason Momoa, and so many other actors. It's a kind of a joke just how many great actors there are in this film. And I don't really need to tell you what the film's about. You sort of know, you know, Batman and he needs to find the team to fight this threat. And in this review, I'm going to be talking about this movie in two separate sort of perspectives. First, I'll be talking about it as sort of a DC fan, someone who loves the comics, someone who loves all the characters, the animated stuff, the games, someone who likes Batman v Superman. And then I'm going to be talking about this film as someone who likes movies, right? As someone who judges and, you know, criticizes and looks into, you know, different types of film structures and, you know, all that. Because I do have relatively mixed feelings about this movie. And I can only sort of explain that if I talk about this movie from two different points of view. But anyway, I've been waiting a long time to talk about this movie. It's it's Justice League, right? I've been wanting to see a Justice League movie ever since I saw the animated series back when I was like three. I love everything about the Justice League. I love all the characters. I love all the stories. And I wanted to see them bring that to life. I wanted to see, if, you know, it could be that satisfying. And so going into this movie, even though I knew about the really troubled productions. I think this film will go down as having one of the most troubled productions of all time. I mean, you know, it started off with Zack Snyder and then, you know, the whole tragedy that his daughter uh, committed suicide. And so he had to drop out and then they brought Joss Whedon on and then, you know, some extensive reshoots. And then they said that Zack Snyder's like three hour cut was uh, deemed unwatchable. And then it was like two hours and 40 minutes and then two hours. And then, you know, Joss Whedon did like a whole load of more reshoots. So going into this film, I was very worried that it was gonna be a mess and that they weren't gonna be able to deliver on my wishes as, as a fan of the material, as a fan of Justice League. But as a DC fan, as someone who likes these characters, I have to say that Justice League is a very good time. It is a very entertaining movie. It's absolutely solid. I think that of course, we'll, we'll get into some of the problems in just a bit. But as a DC fan, I really, really enjoyed this movie. Everyone has said who has reviewed this movie that the best thing about the film are the characters and their interactions between one another. And that could not be more true. Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Flash, Cyborg, and Superman, who you know it's in this movie, it's in the trailers. They're all so good. Ben Affleck as Batman. I love him. In my opinion, Ben Affleck is the best on-screen Batman we've had. Personally, I prefer him to Christian Bale, even though Christian Bale is my second favorite actor of all time. And I, you know, I am pretty excited to hear the whole thing with Jake Gyllenhaal, who's my favorite actor. You know, maybe Matt Reeves wants him as Batman, but personally, I still absolutely love Ben Affleck. I think he kills it in this film. It's, his performance is really good. I would probably say I preferred him in BVS just a bit more because I just feel like his story feels more focused and he has more to do, but he's still very, very good in this film. Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, so good as always. She was very good in Wonder Woman, obviously. It's so great to see her back. Uh, Ray Fisher as Cyborg was a big surprise to me just because I thought that he wasn't gonna be very fun and he wasn't just gonna be a very dull character and just sort of like the tech guy for the Justice League. And even though he is sort of the tech guy, he has so much more depth to him. And I would say out of all the characters, he has the best like arc. Um, Jason Momoa as Aquaman is brilliant. You know, it's so great to see Jason Momoa, someone who I've been watching since Game of Thrones season one, actually finally get some mainstream recognition. He's really, really good in this film. However, I have to say that his story for a relatively significant portion of the film does feel a little bit too detached from the rest of the characters, but it's fine because some of the scenes he's in are great. Now I guess we should talk about Henry Cavill as Superman. This is by far the best performance I've seen from Henry Cavill. This is by far the best Superman I've seen on screen in my opinion, at least like a modern incarnation. He has some of the best scenes in the film. He is so great. And obviously, you know, there's a whole thing with this Henry Cavill CGI mustache. It is noticeable, but I'm just thinking that if you didn't know about his CGI mustache, you may not realize that it's a CGI mustache. But by the way, if you don't know, Henry Cavill had a moustache and they had to CGI it out during the reshoots. So it kind of looks like he's wearing a mouth guard. It's sort of like what you wear when you wrestle or when you play rugby. It's like a protective thing. It kind of looks like that, but it's fine because he's so good. And I know a lot of people have said this as well, but his scenes with the Flash are some of the best scenes in the movie and some of the best scenes in superhero movies ever. In fact, all the other actors who are in the film are really great. Amy Adams, one of my favorite actors, she's very good in this film. Diane Lane, J.K. Simmons, Amber Heard, Jeremy Irons as Alfred is also great. All the performances in this film are really great. But I have to talk about Ezra Miller as The Flash because he's good, right? In fact, the scenes that he shares with his dad, Henry Allen, are very, very, very good. However, the rest of his screen time, it's basically just jokes. He's basically the one that, like, his only purpose in the film is to run around and give jokes. 
and although some of the jokes are good, and we'll get to the humour in just a bit, I just wish that he'd had more to do, I wish he'd had more dramatic moments, he actually contributed to the story aside from just running around and giving jokes, but this is where we run into our first problem, is that there are way too many characters for a film that only lasts two hours. And what I mean by that is if you look at any other superhero film, I guess from Marvel, whether it's Avengers or Civil War, any superhero film with at least four or five superheroes, there are at least two hours and 15 minutes at the mi minimum runtime. And this film is two hours and it's too short. Aquaman, Cyborg and Flash, their introduction should have taken up at least half an hour of the runtime. And it's too quick, right? We'll get introduced to them too quick and it doesn't feel natural. And even though their character introductions are cool, and they do sort of show you what they're like. I just wish that the film had taken a little bit more time. I mean, my favorite movie of the year so far is Blade Runner 2049, and that film's like almost three hours, but it's so good because it takes its time to build tension, to build suspense, to build up the characters so that when the big moments happen, they feel earned and they feel effective. Whereas with this film, it does rush a lot of the beats so that when the big fight finally happens, it doesn't feel as earned as it could have been. So I just wish that this film could have been like two hours at 15 minutes at the very least. Another weak point of the film is the villain. Steppenwolf is complete and utter shit. He's one of the weakest villains we've ever had in movies. Um, he's just really bad and that's all I have to say about it. Now say what you will about Zack Snyder as a storyteller, he may not be very good, but this guy can direct some incredible action scenes because, I mean, the action scenes in Justice League are some of the best in superhero movies of all time. They're just simply brilliant. The opening scene, Great. The final fight, great. Everything I see between that, great. They're so good. Especially this one scene that really stuck out to me. Is the scene, it's not a spoiler, when Wonder Woman is sort of describing Steppenwolf, the villain, sort of describing the invasion to Batman. And there's this flashback scene, and it's incredible. It was so good, and it was so satisfying as a DC fan. But anyway, the action scenes in this film throughout are incredible. But Zack Snyder is a director who can also make incredibly beautiful films without them being colourful. But now, Justice League is colourful. Bright shots of sunlight and stuff like that, which, it's good, but it isn't always a good thing. But I have to say, though, that some of the scenes do feel slightly cheap. Uh, there's this really stupid aspect ratio. They film it like, it should have been shot more, like, widely. Um, I don't know, I just would have preferred that. It just would have felt more cinematic. And some of the sets and some of the green screen that you I guess it's in the reshoots with Joss Whedon does feel very noticeable but for the most part it is a very consistent film in terms of visually but tonally not so much because the film does have some very serious moments which are very good but you don't really take them seriously because the overall tone of the film is very light and very sort of fun and entertaining and I think that is sort of a Joss Whedon influence. I mean, I really wish that there were more serious moments so that, you know, we could actually care about the characters a lot more. And to be honest, I think that this is when we get to my biggest problem with the film is that a lot of the humour doesn't work. You can kind of tell when Whedon takes over, you can kind of tell when, you know, if this is a Snyder scene or a Whedon scene, because not only do they sometimes look visually different, like something very serious is happening, and then there's just like a joke. And sometimes these jokes can feel, frankly, immature and at one point actually kind of sexist and I didn't like that. I, I just didn't think there needed to be that many jokes in the movie and it started to get annoying at some points. And also, a lot of scenes that were in the trailers were not in the movies. This scene, this scene and this scene were not in the movie. And the final battle, which you see earlier in the trailers, it has a very sort of Snyder, very blue, steely, almost Fincher-esque sort of colour palette and then we didn't just sort of color grades it like to this like red like thing which isn't even very easy on the eyes i mean i just wish that we didn't didn't tweak the movie too much uh it did sort of kind of take away from snyder a little bit and i don't think that he did zack snyder's work justice eh, justice but you get the point i think that we didn't did change a little bit too much and i never thought i'd say this but i do kind of miss the snyder influence on things another disappointment that i had with the film was that we didn't get to hear the classic Justice League feed, you know, like the dun, 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 dun. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. We didn't get that. And I thought that when Joss Whedon had Danny Elfman come in to do the score and replace Junkie XL, that, you know, they were going to recreate that somehow, but they didn't. It's a bit of a shame, really. Danny Elfman's score's fine, though. It's not anything mind-blowing, but it's good. There's a lot of great moments in this film. So many that I've been waiting for. And there are so many, like, visual references to the comics that just made me, as a fan, really, really satisfied. The last thing I'm gonna talk about are the end credit sequences. There are two of them, 
and they're both incredible. The first end credit sequence, again, no spoilers here, is very good. It's something that any and every comic book fan has been wanting to see portrayed on the big screen forever. It's incredible. It's funny, it works, and it's just very good. The second end credit scene, when I saw it, I was just like... Because... You kind of have to see it for yourself. It's brilliant. Um, overall, I think Justice League is a good film. I think it is a step in the right direction for the DC universe. Even though this is a very flawed film, the DC fan in me kind of overtakes the film fan in me. And I do think that this is a film that you should go watch. It's a very entertaining film. It's only two hours, even though it should be longer. Uh, I'm going to give Justice League, I think, hmm. Because, you know, this film isn't perfect. There are a lot of flaws. But at the same time, it does a lot of good things as well. I'm going to give Justice League a B plus. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I'm also watching The Punisher. It's pretty good. It's a bit slow, but I'll get my review out as soon as I can. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. Thank you.